Hello and thank you for joining me. My name is God's Power and I'm a teacher of God's Word. Hope I'm meeting everyone in good form. Hope I'm meeting everyone with God's blessings. I want to appreciate God for your life because I know God has been faithful to you. Praise God. Uh, today, I want us to look at something very important to, to man and to how his assistance is here on earth. How he hopes to navigate his life to fulfill God's own purpose for his life. To fulfill that precept to which God has created him for. You see, God relates with man in two different ways. Through his promises and covenant and through his principles. So if a man can balance how these two, a man can live a fulfilling life. A life that God has ordained him to live. So the ability to fulfill both his principles and his promises and covenant is what makes a man successful in life. So it depends on how much of God's promise you know. It depends on how much your understanding you have for those promises. And it depends on how much you believe in those promises coming to pass in your life. You see, God is a promiser. God is a God that promised. And the reason why God promised is because he wants to show himself. He wants to show to you that he's a faithful God and is able to do that which he has promised. So God is never offended when we test his promise. Because that's the only way he can show that he is God. So this message is going to be a two-part message. We're going to take the first part today, which is going to be the promises and covenant of God to a man. And how a man can leverage on it to be successful in life. And the second part will be his principle. So we're going to leave the principle out for today. We're going to do that in our next teaching. But for today, we're going to look at the promises and covenant of God to man. And how man can use them to live a life of fulfillment. A life that is worthy. So today, we're just going to jump into... The message but before we go i'd like to quickly say a word of prayer father we thank you lord for your grace and for your mercies we thank you for your goodness we thank you for the things you've done we thank you for your love towards us we thank you for keeping us we thank you for your provision we thank you for leading our ways to you be all the glory in the name of jesus lord as we learn today i pray that every heart that will hear me every ears that's hoping to hear me this day lord will receive grace grace in their heart to absorb this word and to run with it in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father in jesus name we pray today i'll be taking you through five stages five steps there are so many uh, uh things in the bible that portrays god's faithfulness to man but today we'll be looking at five promises and if you can hold on to this promise because every other promise is in these five promises if you can hold on to it and get the understanding of it, it will make you a better person. Praise God. So we're just going to go into God's word and we're just going to examine these promises and see how we can apply them to our lives so that we can live a life that God has ordained for us. So first promise in God's word is that the existence of man guarantees his presence. So wherever a man is, the presence of God is. But firstly, I would like to quickly say something that is very important before we go into that place. Uh, you see, the blessings of God, the promises of God and his covenant is for everyone. But it is person specific. What do I mean by that? What I mean is the promises of God, the blessings of God, God has made it available to all man. But it is the responsibility of a man to come into that promise to enjoy what that promise gives so if you don't have the understanding of the promises of god you cannot enjoy what comes with the promise amen praise the lord so we're going straight to the first one the existence of god guarantees the presence the existence of a man guarantees the presence of god so wherever a man is the presence of God is there. Amen. So we're going to read Isaiah 43 and verse 2. I will read from the New King James Version. The Bible says, When you pass through the waters, 
I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Amen. So if you walk through the fire, the Lord will be with you. No matter where you are, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, there's a guaranteed promise that he will be with you. That's the promise of God. Amen. Psalm 27 and verse 1. I will read something from the Bible. Psalm 27 and verse 1. The Bible said, that that's the, this is the Psalm of David. David said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let your faith replace your fear. You have to come to the place where your faith replaces your fear. The presence of God to you must be evident at all times. You must be able to feel it that God is with you. Because he has promised it. That we will always be with you. He will neither leave you nor forsake you. Praise the Lord. We'll go to the second promise. God is always in charge. So you don't have to doubt. You don't have to doubt anything. You don't have to doubt anything because God is always in charge. If you know that God is in charge, you don't have to doubt. No matter what the thing is, you need to know that God is in charge at all times. And now this cut across everything in life. Whatsoever you do, wheresoever you go, whatsoever you are involved with, know that God is the one in charge. You're not in charge. God is in charge. As long as you know the promises of God, God is in charge of all things. Amen. I want to read somewhere for us in the Bible. Amen. You see, um, the, the, the ability for you to fix your mind without wavering is very important. James says something that I want to read to us. James chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, And let not that man think in his heart that he will receive anything from the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable by his ways. Amen. And that version said, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That is to say, as long as you have doubt in your mind, in your mind, if that doubt is there, there is no way you can get a thing done properly. Your eyes has to be fixed on God. There is a need for you to have that confidence in God that he is able to do all things. You don't have to doubt in your mind because God is in charge. The third promise, the eternity of God's goodness. You can't be despair. There is eternity of God's goodness. God has guaranteed his goodness for you. I'll read something in the scripture. Amen. Psalm 1 verse 5. The Bible says, For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. The goodness of God is based on His loyal truth. Amen. That is, God has guaranteed it for you. He will do it for you. Is a guarantee for his goodness. His goodness is guarantee, is a sure thing. So we need to know that God is a good God. He is ever looking for how we'll be better in life. So when things negative come across your way, it isn't God. It isn't God. Because God is a gracious and good God. Praise God. I will go to the fourth uh, point, the fourth promise of God to a man. God is a watcher and a keeper. God watches over us and he keeps us from every harm. He is our watcher and he is our keeper. I will read something for us in the Bible. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9. The Bible says, The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. So his eyes watches around the earth 
looking at us as children, strengthening us, guiding and protecting us. That is God's eternal promise for us. It is his eternal promise for his children. He's constantly watching over us to guide and to protect us. We need to know this so that wherever we go, when we sleep at night, wherever we find ourselves, there is a keeper of our lives. Nothing can happen to you. Nothing is permitted to happen to you. No, nothing is permitted to happen to you because there is a coverage over you that cannot be broken. Amen. Let me read something for you. Very interesting thing in the Bible. Now, let's go to Psalm 121 and verse 5. Psalm 121 and verse 5. The Bible says something very, very interesting. It says, The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. Praise God. I'm really excited by that verse. The Lord watches over you. The Lord protects you as the shade around you. That is to say there is nothing that can break in. There is a protective hedge that nothing can break through to meet you. Because there is a coverage of God over you. Amen. It's something to be excited about. The understanding of you knowing that wherever you are, in spite of anything that happens to you, the Lord is around you. Daniel knew this. So Daniel was thrown into the, into the lion's den. And Daniel was there with all confidence, knowing that there is a God that can keep. There is a God that can protect. There is a God that says a thing and there is nothing that can negate it. Daniel knew. So we need to have this understanding of his shield upon us that he is our keeper that he watches over us amen let's go to the last uh, promise of god to a man god's promise us victory we have victory in the lord god promised us victory in everything that we do the promise of god is victorious victorious in all things we will be victorious i'll quickly read something for us in the bible before we round up this message second chronicle chapter 20 and verse 17 the bible says second chronicle chapter 20 and verse 17 this is a prophecy of jeziel to um, the son of zechariah uh, it, it says something when the uh, the um the ammonite the uh, moab and Mount Seir are gathered together to fight against the children of Israel. He said something, he prophesied it and he said, You will not have to fight in this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord. The salvation he will give you. And see the salvation that the Lord will give you. So in spite of what we are going through, in spite of where we find ourselves, the Lord has made us victorious. Let it be rest assured in your mind, in your heart, that you are victorious in all things. No matter what the thing is, no matter what the conditions are, you are victorious in all things. Praise the Lord. Those that believe in God have great gain. They have great gain in wealth. They have great gain in, in good health. They have great gain in the things of life. They stand tall, far above principalities and power. They have spiritual confidence and spiritual hedge over the host of darkness. And above all, they have a place in the kingdom of God. I would like to stop here and and hope you will join me um, the next time in the in the second part of this message. Uh, before I go, I'd like to say a word of prayer for a number of people that are watching me today. And um, you see, this promises doesn't come to everyone. Like I said in the beginning of this message, I said God's promises and covenant is for all, but it is person specific. You need to be qualified for it. And what other thing will make you qualified than accepting God to come to your life so that you can be God's own. You can be one of those that the Lord will call his own. 
So if you're here watching me today, I'd like you to lead you in a short prayer to the Lord. And I'd like you to give your life to God. So that you can be one of those who do these promises we apply to. So if you're watching me today, I'd like you to stretch your hand to the screen and pray this short prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercies. I thank you for bringing me to knowing your promises for my life. Lord, I'm giving my life to you that you accept me into your kingdom. My life is yours now. I accept Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. And from today onward, Lord, use me for your work. Use me for your word. Use me. Let the zeal of your word consume me, O God, as I yield myself unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I like to pray for you that are looking unto God for something, that are looking unto God for, for something that, that, you, that you feel is not coming yet. I, I, I like to pray for you. Father, I thank you for my brothers. I thank you for my sisters. I thank you for that man, for that woman. I thank you for that person that is looking unto you for something, for, for a miracle, for, for a touch. Father, I pray for as many that are sick. I ask for your healing virtue to flow through this broadcast unto them in the name of Jesus. Let there be healing. Let there be power. Let there be strength in the life of men. Let every weakness be turned to strength in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever that man or that woman looking at me is looking for, Father, I pray that you provide for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to share this message to as many people you can share it to so that it will bless them. And I'd like you to subscribe so you can get the notification whenever I upload the video. Now, don't forget to join me in my next um, part of this message. Uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be uh, a good one. Um, it's going to be a balance to what I've just uh, taught now. So the Lord will bless you and the Lord will be your guide. In Jesus' name. Now, thank you for staying with me until I come your way next time. God bless you.